Aston Martin as a company has not always been adroit at staying on the right lines. Through its many changes of ownership in nearly 100 years, spectacular motorsport victories have been matched by some equally high profile, corporate and styling failures. Even some of the British mark's most ardent fans say its latest successful sports cars are undermined by its launch of the Signet Town Car, a reworked Toyota IQ that is more costly duckling than baby swan. I'm here in Spain to test not just one, but two new models that Aston Martin hopes will put the record straight. The Vantage S, which is very much at home on the track, and the Virage, a Grand Tourer. But do they bring enough to the company's lineup? to keep it near the front of the grid. This is the Vantage S, a tweaked version of the already potent V8 sports car. A sleeker look on the outside complements a weight loss of 30 kilos. Underneath the bodywork, there's another 10 horsepower, plus a new map for the exhaust bypass. A new seven-speed manual gearbox makes the most of a modest power gain. Plus there's better suspension and an uprated stability system that still allows you to enjoy yourself. The steering brakes and handling are all sharper and the sport button speeds up the engine response and gear changes, which helps to make more noise. Aston Martin's two new cars have been designed by Miles Nurnberger. It's an evolution of style rather than a revolution. Here we have the V8 Vantage S, which is really the ultimate driver's Vantage. We've taken great influence from our GT4 program. If you look on the front, we've got this carbon splitter. On the side, you've got this very low sill, which really gives the car a great stance and proportion. To the rear, we've got this flip-up spoiler, which adds an aggressive element and gives a lot more stability and downforce. And the Virage? The Virage is a great balance of opposites. If you take the front end, for instance, it gives this car a unique character. It's assertive but never aggressive. Is it going to eat into DB9 sales? No, we don't believe so. We're offering customers more choice. So you have DB9, Virage and DBS. They all offer unique characters. I've had the 430 horsepower Vantage S for breakfast. Aston Martin is now bringing me a Virage convertible for an afternoon drive in the countryside, with a difference. The 490 brake horsepower Virage sits between the DB9 and the DBS in ability as well as in price. But Aston Martin has not produced a completely new model since the four-door Rapide. And while Aston's new model slices its own market ever thinner, rivals such as Porsche, Mercedes and even the newly confident Lotus are starting to put fresher ideas on the road. In addition, the company does need to arrest a 20% fall in sales in 2010 from the previous year. The cabin is a pleasing blend of tradition and technology, but apart from the noise, there's little that's low tech about the engine and chassis. Even in sport mode, the Virage can sometimes feel a little less than razor edged but it is meant to be a Grand Tourer. But that said, there's plenty of power available when you want it. With a price tag starting from 110 and 150,000 pounds, the Vantage S and the Virage offer a reassuringly expensive way to have fun. There's a rawness about driving both cars that should appeal to the enthusiast. By staying true to that, Aston Martin should maintain its appeal to its most faithful buyers. I'm Rote Jaggi of the Financial Times.